Hello everybody. Till now we have been uh, discussing in detail about how we go about modeling circuits and we some various methods of modeling the circuits uh, starting from the state equation approach. We performed the process of obtaining the state equation, we went through the process of obtaining the sinusoidal steady state model and then the transfer function model and then we did the analysis of the circuit uh, using the transfer function model. Following this we performed the analysis based on phase R notations and we saw that uh, by the phase R notations we have three uh, basic triangles, the impedance triangle, the admittance triangle and the power triangle using these we can get very useful information about the circuit and the system. Now from this class onwards we shall uh, discuss about the systems. So mainly uh, we would like to cover in this uh, uh, set of courses the following major systems that is one is being the transformer. and then the motors slash generators. Both these come under the category of electro magnetic systems. The motors and generators apart from being electromagnetic they are also electromechanical. This means that three major domains will come into the picture while trying to understand and model these systems. One is the electrical domain. Then we have the magnetic domain and we have the mechanical domain. So the uh, modeling with respect to these two domains those systems uh, we call that one as the electromagnetic. The electromagnetic systems. Systems that also involve the mechanical we call the electromechanical but in actuality it is electromag electromagnetomechanical systems. So uh, all the motors the motors cover all these three domains. The transformer covers these two domains. So for the major portion of the rest of the course we will attempt to uh, categorize and uh, discuss about these two major categories of equipments which you will be using very frequently in practice. So in transformers themselves you have the single phase transformer and the three phase transformer. sorry the three phase transformer. <coughs> uh, 
and even the transformer you have the power transformer, pulse transformer so on and so forth. However, for the uh, purpose of this course we are going to stick to power transformer and in the case of the motors generators generators we are going to discuss about DC motors and generators. We are going to discuss about the AC machines which can be classified as the induction machine, the induction machine, the synchronous machine and there are various other machines like this which reluctance motors and stepper motors so on and so forth. However, we are going to stick uh, ourselves to these uh, types that is the induction motor, uh, induction generator and synchronous motor and uh, the synchronous generation also called as the alternator. So, these various categories of equipments we will be studying in depth uh, looking at its mathematical model uh, uh, using the various tools that we have used till now, the state equations, the phasor, uh, the spatial uh, 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 space phasors, or the spatial phasors and the spatial coordinate systems all those things we will try to study, analyze and get information about all these equipments. So, before studying about these various equipments, we need to understand a bit about how the energy flows, how the power flows into various ports. Okay. So, that would be the focus uh, of uh, the discussion now. <coughs> If you recall very early in our course, in a very early session, we had uh, stated that energy emanates from a source and from that source it goes to a sink or the destination or the load. So, in the process of going from the source to the load, the following things can happen to the energy. It could get dissipated, it could get dissipated in a resistance R, or it could get stored. or it could get transformed into another domain. It could get transformed into another domain. That is from electric domain to magnetic domain or magnetic domain to electric domain or magnetic domain to mechanical domain so on and so forth. And if it gets stored we also mentioned there are two ways in which it could get stored. It could get stored as potential energy in the medium of the capacitor. C or it could store as kinetic energy in the medium of the inductance in the case of electric circuits, it will get stored here as half C V square 
and here as half L i square. So, all these things can happen when the energy emanates from a source and goes towards a sink or a load. Three main things can happen which is dissipation in a resistance, storage is a potential form in a capacitance, storage in a kinetic form in the inductance and a fourth thing that can happen is get transformed into another domain. These are the things that can happen. This we have discussed earlier. Now, energy or the power, power is basically rate, rate of energy has two variables. You see in all our electric circuits, we have two variables associated with the power or energy, power variables let me call them as. So, one of the power variables is called the potential variable which enables storage of energy in the potential form like half C V square, half C V square and that variable V which is voltage in the electric circuit is the potential variable. The other variable is the kinetic variable which enables the energy to be stored by virtue of the motion or virtue of the flow, uh, uh, the charges being in flow and in this case the current here, the I which is the current. So, there is a potential variable, the voltage in the case of the electric circuit, kinetic variable current uh, as the uh, kinetic energy storing variable. So, power or energy in whichever domain is associated with these two variables which is the potential variable and the current variable. These two variables have been called by various other names also. So, they are called the potential variable, they are also called the across variable and it is also called the effort variable. The across variable because it is the voltage across a device that is why the, it is called across variable in some literature. Is the effort variable, uh, it is used in some literature especially in bond graph uh, modeling uh, methods. The uh, current variable or the kinetic energy storage variable is also called the through variable in some literature through variable because it is the current through the device. It is also called the flow variable because it implies the energy is stored by virtue of something being in motion or something flowing. So, that is called the flow variable. <coughs> so, these kind of variables are there in every domain wherever there is energy associated you will have these two types of uh, categories in the variables one being the potential variable or the across variable or the effort, the other being the kinetic or the through variable or the flow. Now, in every domain <coughs> we have these two variables. So, in the electrical domain this is nothing but voltage, voltage is the potential variable and the kinetic variable is the flow variable is current. This is expressed as volts and this as amps, but always note that 
the product of the two variables that is the product of the potential variable and the kinetic variable is always power that is if you multiply them is always will be equal to watts whichever be the domain. If you look at the mechanical domain In the mechanical domain you have the rotational and the linear rotational linear. So, in the rotational you have the torque Newton meter as the potential variable and you have the speed or the angular speed speed omega in radians per second as the flow variable. In the case of the mechanical linear we have force In terms of Newton's or kg force and velocity meter per second. Always the product is watts. So, if this is omega and this is T, T omega is the product which is watts. Force into velocity F V is in watts. Magnetic The magnetic domain MMF and it is not flux as it is normally assumed to be, it is d phi by dt rate of change of flux because only then the product is going to be watts because MMF is Mi, d phi by dt is V by M by Faraday's law, we will mention that later. Product will be V into I which is watts. So, like that any domain if you take it hydraulics you have a potential variable which is pressure and the flow or the kinetic variable which is the d by d t of Q which is the flow. Q is the flow d by d t Q is flow rate. Okay. So much meter cube volume per second. Okay. So, like this, whichever be the domain, you will have two sets of variables always. One is the potential variable or the across variable or the effort variable, the other is the flow variable, the through variable or the kinetic variable and always the potential variable into the kinetic variable will always be the power variable watts. So, now let us discuss something about ports because we need to discuss, discuss about the ports because the power is going to interact with various components. Uh, various systems and various equipments only through ports. So, if you take this, if you take this whole page, okay, this whole page let us divide this into two. And if you look at this page here, the left side of the page and the right side of the page they have no interaction because it is divide, divided by this uh, assumed imaginary line let us say. Now, let us make a hole here. Now, this left side of the page and the right side of the page can interact through this hole. And we call this normally uh, this hole as a window or 
a port. So port is like a window which is the means through which two things can interact through that particular interface. Now suppose we have on this side electric circuits and the power has to interact with a particular component let us say which is on this side and let us say that is a resistance R which has two terminals. Now these two terminals are connected to the port like this. So then now the port has two connections, two terminals to which the resistance is connected. Now all interactions of power and energy with the resistor in that domain meaning if it is an electrical domain in the electrical domain has to be through this port has to be only through this port nowhere else. And this port here has two variables associated with it like the power variables we have the two power variables is not it. One is the E and that is E is the effort voltage across variable through variable sorry not through variable across variable the potential variable that is the effort. Then there is one more variable which is let us say the I the I is the flow variable, the current variable, the throw variable, kinetic variable all this mean the same thing. So this port at the port there are two variables which is the potential variable and the kinetic variable that is voltage and the current product of which is the power and the interface at the interface that power is what is going to interact with this side of the circuit and this side of the circuit. Now this element R as it interacts with any other circuit only through this port this is called a one port. the resistance R is called a one port. Likewise, we could say all elements and all equipments that interact with other equipments and circuits in the same domain through only one port are all called one ports. For example, if we take instead of a resistance, an inductance L. This also has only one port that is it has two terminals. So in the electrical domain, if you have two terminals, you can have only one port. So L is also a one port because it interacts with other circuits in the same domain with only one port. Likewise, you could also have a capacitance C. Capacitance also has two terminals and interacts with the external circuits with this one or two terminals only which means one port and therefore C is also a one port element.
So, if we have one port therefore, we, uh, we can expect to think about are there two ports meaning let us say are there devices where there are two power ports with which it can interact with the external circuits in the external world. So, here you have port 1, you have port 2, port 1 and port 2. Now, each port will have an across variable let us say this E 1 and this port also will have an across variable let us say E 2. This port will have a through variable which is I 1 and this port is also going to have a through variable whatever be the direction I 2. So, each port each power port is associated with two variables the effort variable and the flow variable the potential variable and the kinetic variable. Now, this is a two port this particular equipment or a system is a two port system. is a two port system. So, we have the one ports and we have the two port systems and we should also have probably the multi ports where we have a system which interacts with which interacts with the external circuit with multiple ports. So, you have port 1, you have port 2, you have port 3, port 4, so on I can have any number of ports this port n and each port is associated with an effort variable E 1, a through variable I 1 an effort variable E 2 and a flow variable I 2 an effort variable E 3 flow variable I 3 effort variable E 4 I 4 E n I n. So, each port is associated with an effort variable and a flow variable and such a system is called a multi port system. So, we have the one ports, we have the two ports and we have the multi ports. So, the examples of the one ports are one ports. All ports which have two terminals, two leads, all devices which have just only two terminals and two leads, they all fall into the category of one ports. So, you could have batteries, you could have voltage source, you could have current source. resistance, inductance, capacitance, these are one ports because they have just two terminals. just two terminals. So, what about the two ports?
V sa, then the case of the two ports, there were two power ports, port 1 and port 2, each associated with the effort and variables. This is a two port, this is a two port device. Now, two things can happen in the two port device. between the port 1 side and the port 2 side. The port 1 voltage variable can be related to the port 2 voltage variable. Port 1 current variable is related to the port 2 current variable. So, the relationship is voltage to voltage current to current and always seeing that between the between the port 1 and port 2 there is no storage of energy all the energy that comes in port 1 is going to the port 2 and we in each case the conservation of power has to be maintained. Now, an example of this of course, would be a transformer, we will come to that one. That is E 2 is equal to let us say M E 1. So, you see the voltage variables are related and I 1 is equal to M I 2. This is obtained by the energy or the power relation uh, relationship that is the power which is there at the primary and the power which is there at the secondary are equated that is E 1 I 1 should be equal to E 2 I 2. This is the equation for a transformer. There is another way in which the port variables can also be related that is crosswise that is E 1 and I 2 can be related I 1 E 2 can be related that is E 2 is equal to M I 1, E 1 is equal to M I 2. So, this cross linking of variables that is potential variable on one side linked to the kinetic variable on the other side such equipment such devices are called gyrators. So, when the potential variable of one side is linked to the potential variable of the other port, kinetic variable of one port linked to the kinetic variable of the other port that is same type variable linked to the same type variable of the other port such devices are called transformers. If one type variable potential for example, is linked to the other type variable the kinetic in the other port then such crosswise linking of variables is called gyrators. So, these are the two types of two ports that you will come across. <coughs> a DC motor can be modeled as a gyrator, we will look at that shortly. Multiports what are multiports? few sessions ago, 
when we were discussing about the Kirchhoff's voltage law and the Kirchhoff's current law, we made mention about the junctions, the voltage junction and the current junction. The voltage junction, the current junctions are nothing but multipower ports. If you take for example, the circuit like this, we have the R L C circuit. This is a voltage junction, is not it, which is basically if you look at it in a way, we have a voltage source, I will rewrite it using a different color. We have a voltage source, we have the resistor, we have the inductor, we have the capacitor. These are all one ports. See, I have one, I have one, two, three, four one ports. They are all connected in series. And they interact with the external circuits. in this manner through just one ports. So, this, so this is a junction. And each is having let us say if this is E 1 and this is E 2, this is E 3, this is E 4 across variables. So, you see port 1, port 2, port 3, port 4 all connected together and that is a junction and this is a voltage junction. Why is it a voltage junction? Because E 1, E 2, E 3, E 4 all add up obeying Kirchhoff's law, so they sum to 0. Therefore, this is a voltage junction. The voltage junction has something in common, all have the same flow, they all have the same current. This is called a voltage junction. Likewise, you also have the current junction. You could have a current source, you could have a capacitance, a resistance all connected together. Now, if we look at this junction here, now that junction there has this junction here has current flow in current flow out, current flow out. KCL is obeyed, the summation of all currents is 0, but the voltages is common. So, the voltages of all these power port junctions is common, they all have the same. So, which means if I have, if I have an imaginary junction like that, to which I have connected, let us say a 
current source I have connected this is only a power equivalent I have connected a capacitance and then I have in this port a resistance and something. Now, all these junctions have the same potential V, they all have same potential V, so, the voltage is same, but the currents the currents are different, each have different currents I 1, I 2, I 3 so on such that I 1 plus I 2 plus I 3 will add up to 0 obeying Kirchhoff's current law. Such junctions are called current junctions. So, this is what we discussed a uh, few uh, sessions ago about the voltage junctions and the current junctions uh, while discussing the Kirchhoff's voltage law and the current law. So, these current junctions and the voltage junctions form the multiports. In fact, in electric circuits only these two junctions come under the classification of the multiports. So, you have the one ports, the two ports and the multiports and in the two ports which is what our focus is going to be in the forthcoming classes sessions you have the transformer. So, the transformer is having four terminals because it has two ports. it has E 1 and I 1 here and it has E 2 and an I 2 here. So, inside it goes into the magnetic domain, the energy in the electric domain flows through into this device, goes into the magnetic domain, then again gets converted from magnetic to the electric domain and then flows out of this port. So, it enters as electrical energy through one port, converts into magnetic domain, energy in the magnetic domain, does some work and then gets converted into the electrical domain and then comes out through the other port. So, that is how the flow of energy would, uh, would be in a transformer, flow of energy in the transformer. This port where energy is being sourced is called the primary and this port where the energy is interacting with the load is called the secondary. Likewise, if you take a DC motor as a black box here, it has two ports, however, there is a domain conver conversion. This is electric domain. and this is mechanical domain. In the electric domain, there is of course, a voltage and current and in the mechanical domain, there is a torque and angular speed omega.
So, if the torque is related, now torque is torque is your potential variable on the mechanical domain E is the voltage is the potential uh, variable in the electric domain, current is the pot, uh, uh, kinetic uh, variable in the electric domain, omega is the kinetic variable or the rotational variable in the mechanical domain. So, the link if we make it like that, let us say the torque is equal to some k ie, i. torque is proportional to i or torque is equal to k i, k is proportional constant, uh, 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 proportional proportionality constant k and E is equal to k into omega, k here is again the same proportionality constant as written here, only then you will have power balance or the energy balance. So, if you see here the cross variables are linked that is the potential variable and the kinetic variable in the other domain, the potential variable and the kinetic variable in the other domain. So, therefore, this equipment is a gyrator. So, that is a gyrator but this equation you will see torque proportional to the current armature current I A or the back EMF proportional to the angular speed, these are equations of motion or the motor. So, this is a motor. So, we saw one example of a transformer and an example of a gyrator in the two ports. So, in the case of a transformer, we have the primary port in the electric domain and it is the energy is taken from the primary into the transformer which is in the magnetic domain and then back again through the other port which is again in the electric domain. So, this is your transformer. this is your primary, this is the secondary. We need to now study this interface, the electromagnetic interface to understand the power flow from the electrical to the magnetic, magnetic to the electrical which will give us the understanding of the transformer. So, transformer is physically made up of two major components one is a core this core is a ferrite material or iron or something that can carry the magnetic flux in it, okay. a magnetic material. So, onto this core you have to wind some copper coils. So, let us say we wind some windings on the core. We 
we wind some windings on the core one on this leg and then also on this leg. So we have four terminals here. So this will be the primary, this is the magnetic domain and this is the secondary. So energy from the electric domain comes to this port. Transformer as just these two, just a magnetic core, this is a magnetic core which could be ferrite material or it could be steel, new metal so on and so forth. Now this core, on this core is wound a copper coil, so this coil is copper coil or aluminum coil that is all the transformer. The link between the port 1 and port 2 that is the primary port and the secondary port is only through the magnetic domain otherwise electrically there is absolutely no connection between them. So the energy enters the electric port and somehow it has to get connected into the magnetic domain and the energy has to energy has to get converted into the magnetic domain and the energy in the magnetic domain gets linked to the secondary port and the energy goes out through the secondary port into the electric domain into the electric domain. This is how the energy flow would occur and somewhere here the electromagnetic energy that the energy gets converted from electric to magnetic by the laws of electromagnetism. Electro magnetism. There is fantastic counter contributions made uh, very early by a scientist, eminent scientist Faraday, Michael Faraday and he proposed the law of electromagnetism and it is in fact named after him, it is called the Faraday's law of electromagnetism. He proposes a simple law, what, what it states is that if there is a flow of current here, if there is a flow of current here in the coil and if that coil is wound in a magnetic core, within the core within the core there is a motive force set up and as it is in the magnetic domain in the electric domain we call the electromotive force the voltage is the electromotive force which drives the current and the magnetic domain a motive force gets developed and that is called the magneto motive force or the MMF that gets set up and this magnetomotive force drives a flux within the core and this flux links with the coils of the other port and 
that will generate an EMF in the electric domain, electromotive force in the electric domain. This is electromotive force in the electric domain, which is by means of which is how the energy gets transformed. So, he proposes this basic relationship V the voltage induced across a coil is equal to m d phi by d t. Voltage across a coil. It could be the applied voltage across the coil or the induced voltage across the coil. This is number of turns in the coil which is wound around the magnetic core, the ferrite core or the steel core. And this is whenever there is a current, I said there is going to be a magnetic motive force set up within the core and that magnetic motive force is going to drive a flux and the rate of change of flux is what is going to withstand the voltage, applied voltage or induce a voltage in the coil. And this is the rate of change of flux. This is essentially the basic principle of electromagnetism called the Faraday's law of electromagnetism. What it means? If you apply a current in a coil that is going to set up an MMF and that MMF is going to drive a flux and the rate of change of flux is going to induce a voltage on the coil and that voltage will be given by this relationship voltage V which is equal to n d phi by dt. Or if you apply a voltage across a coil that is going to cause a current to flow through the coil which will set up an MMF which will set up a flux and the rate of change of the flux will be uh, such that it will match the applied voltage V. So, this is the most important law in electromagnetism. We shall use this Faraday's law of electromagnetism very frequently in future because we will be dealing with electromagnetic equipments like the transformer and electromagneto mechanical equipment like the motors. In the next class, we will see how we go about modeling and understanding the transformer using the principles of electromagnetism or the Faraday's laws of electromagnetism that we just discussed and also the uh, concepts of ports that we discussed in this session. Thank you.